the Jews have instigated to the Arabian governments in Egypt, in Jordan, in the Arabian Peninsula, in Morocco, in Tunisia, wherever they go, they have told them to omit from the textbooks in elementary and high schools and even in the college courses at university level to omit those lessons that have to do with Islamic Jewish history, with the history of the Jews in Medina, with the history of Jews in the Arabian Peninsula, with the history of Jews in the Qur'an, Bani Israel and all of this, okay, it may be there in the Qur'an. And if they could delete that from the Qur'an, they would do all that they could to do it. But they know that they're not going to be able to do that. So they don't want any explanation of these ayat in these countries. And there are committees, very well-financed committees in Egypt that are going about this work to try to delete and omit any and all reference to Jews in their history in the Qur'an, to Jews as far as their history towards the Prophet is concerned, so that they may be able to sell this peace process to the Muslim public. But the Qur'an is more vibrant now than it was in the past, and the Muslims are rediscovering this Qur'an, and in the process, they are getting ready for this encounter with these Israeli Zionist Jews. And we have been open on many occasions, trying to invite any of these Israeli Zionist Jews to come and correct us if we are wrong. But this is one area they don't want to deal with. Have you realized in all the literature and everything they say, they don't say anything about what the Qur'an says about them? Why? If we are in an era of enlightenment, if these are very smart Jews, if they are the scholars and the intellectuals and the pundits of this world, why are you avoiding what the Qur'an says about you? I would like to end, and I know I've taken a little more time than i supposed to. I would like to end this presentation by a khutbah, the first one that I gave here in South Africa about 10 or 11 years ago, in which Allah says, Ya ayuha ladina amanu, la tattakhidhu al-yahuda wa nasara awliya, ba'aduhum awliya ba'd. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ O you who are divinely committed, do not ally yourselves with the political expressions or manifestations of Christians and Jews, because whoever does that has become one of them. Whoever allies themselves with the political expression of Christians and Jews in this world has become one of them and no longer is one of us. These rulers in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in all of these lands are no longer part of us. The tafsir of this ayah has become very clear, especially in the past year for everyone to see. Anyone who still considers a Mubarak or a Fahd who is making tawaf around the Kaaba and making sajda in the Haram and fasting during Ramadan, whoever continues to consider them part of the Muslim Ummah has not understood the Qur'an. <laughs> The Ascendant Quran, realigning man to the divine power culture. The first ever tafsir written directly in English by one of the best known Quran scholars in North America, Imam Muhammad Al Asi. Three volumes of this multi volume tafsir are now available from Crescent International at a special price of $40 per volume, including shipping anywhere in North America. The noble messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is revered and loved by all Muslims. But there is one aspect of his blessed life that is not well known. And that is the treaties he entered into, as well as the letters he wrote to kings and rulers of neighboring countries. For the first time, this book, Power Manifestations of the Sirah, examining the letters and treaties of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, discusses this crucial topic in detail.
The book is now available at a special price of $30, including shipping and handling anywhere in North America. Order from Crescent International, P.O. Box 747, Gormley, Ontario, L0H1G0. Or call us, 905-887-8913. Order your copy today.